Welcome to America's Heroes Group. Welcome back to America's Heroes Group. This time with our roundtable, we are globally connected. Military Family Matters with partner family caregiver Keisha L. Jackson. Today is Saturday, June 4th, 2022. June is LGBTQ Pride Month. We just heard our host of Kelly earlier. I'm Sean Claiborne, the co-host, Army National Guard veteran. Our executive producer is Glenda Smith. And our digital media producer is Ivan Ortega of Scouts Honor Productions. And we have our partner back on the line, Ms. Keisha L. Jackson. She's a U.S. Air Force veteran and family caregiver. And she brought us a panelist, Troy J. Broussard, Senior Advisor of AARP, Veterans and Military Families Initiatives. How are you guys doing today? I'm doing sure. fantastic. It's going to have you both on. John. So we're going to talk Not about to caregiving here. and fraud support for veterans and their families. So tell me a little bit about this fraud support. What do you mean by that in the, in the realm of caregiving? Like Keisha? Uh, yeah. Keisha? Okay. Sorry. Hey, uh, hey Sean. Hey, this is a, a great topic. I, I wanted to um, bring this to the audience. Um, for caregivers in particular, you know, whether it's military caregivers or a person that's caregiving for a former military person, or it's very prevalent out there that you can get calls to be scammed um, from prescription medicine to older people getting different type of um, romance scams. So to have someone like Joy to be able to come and just, you know, talk a little bit about what AARP is doing to help protect the military and uh, the veterans and the military veteran caregiver populace is just really, really helpful. It's, a, it's something that I wanted to bring to the show for quite some time, so I'm really happy to have it today. And Troy, so I know AARP does a lot of work with seniors um, and also do, they do a lot of research and also go into a lot of the numbers to um, issues that are important to seniors. Um, what are some of the problems that Phoenix seniors are facing when it comes to fraud, particularly um, veterans? Uh, absolutely. Uh, well, first of all, Sean, I want to thank you for your service in the Army National Guard. Uh, I am an Army veteran myself, so uh, it's always great to speak to uh, other veterans as well. So uh-huh. very, yeah, absolutely exi- excited to be here today to, to just to talk to the audience today as it relates to a, a, big, a big major issue that we're finding is that a lot of uh, family caregivers, veteran caregivers, and, and, and you know, regular audiences as well, but especially veterans are being targeted by fraud. And, and, and what we're finding is that, you know, 40% of veterans and their families are more likely to be targeted by scammers than the civilian population. And for us, that, that's very alarming. Uh, there was a report by the Federal Trade Commission um, that was done in 2021 that we found that over $260 million was lost um, from specific scams targeting veterans and their families. That's $102 million higher than it was in 2021. So we created some resources that we could assist veterans and their families to fight back and prepare them to fight back in this in this time here. So why are veterans uh, targeted? You would think that I mean, sure. veterans be more savvy, actually. I mean, but, and I've heard this statistic right. before, but what? why are veterans particularly more vulnerable? Yeah, and, and I'm going to say more vulnerable because they're being targeted by the scammers. The scammers know that veterans have access to benefits, different benefits than the regular civilian population. When you're talking about veterans, they have access to, um, you know, some pension benefits, some um, veteran benefits as well, you know, home loans. And, and, and what happens is scammers see that as opportunity to go ahead and, and to really focus their attention. And what they'll, what they'll do is, uh, Sean, they'll focus, on, they'll, they'll focus on the areas of, oh, you served in the military. Thank you for your service. Um, and use that military jargon to break and to create that relationship. And then once the trust is built, then at that point, let's verify some of your information. And then once they you know, grab your, your social security number, so not only are they scamming you for these things I mentioned, but now they have your social security number to do identity theft as well. So it just compounds itself. So we created some resources to help uh, our veterans and their families fight back from that. So before we go a little more into in detail on some of the things sure. that are going on, what are some of the things that veterans can do to protect uh, themselves from this type of fraud? Oh, thank you. I'm glad you mentioned that. I think the number one thing that I would 
tell our, our, our veterans uh, and, the, and their families to do is to is to make sure that you develop what I like to call is, a, is develop your no script. Be ready and be prepared that when that person calls in um, and if something does not sound correct and, and something's not going the way that you're suspecting it should, hang up the phone. That's the first thing. But I would also recommend that folks join, um, you know, the a robocall service, blocking service on for do not call gov. Make sure you, you know, don't um, so, make sure you sign up for that so you can prevent those calls from coming in. You won't prevent all of them, but you could severely lessen them. And if something sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Um, the Veterans Administration will not call you to verify your Social Security number or anything is along that, that inform, that, those lines. So please uh, just make sure you develop that no script and keep your guard up for anyone that's asking to verify your personal information. Do not share it over the phone or, you know, online now as well, too. Be careful. Another thing that I've been reading about is a lot of people are trying to impersonate veterans so they can, yes. um, not just to target veterans, but to target people in general. A lot of scams out there. Um, there was a, a few years back, and if you remember, there was a, the Johnny Bobbitt case where he, there was a, a, a GoFundMe page that was created for a veteran, a homeless veteran, when the actuality was all a hoax. It was a, they made up a story where uh, a lady's car broke down, and this veteran came and helped her out, and she gave him like some money because of that. Wow. And then they were, felt bad for him, so they went and created this GoFundMe page. But the reality of it was, it was all a big hoax, and then they eventually got busted for doing for the, for that. Um, what, what are some of the things that what are some of the red flags that people need to, to look for yeah. when you have someone impersonating or lying to you about um, you know a cause or a not for profit they want you to, do, to donate to yeah what I would recommend our our listeners do today is to ensure that when you receive those types of calls talking about gift to this this um, this veteran charity you know, I would ask a couple of questions. The first thing I would ask is, give me the name of the charity and who's the best person to contact for that particular charity. And then at that point, that scammer will, the red flag will, will, will uh, alert them to that. They're not trying to give me their credit card number. They're asking me more information, which I don't have. Um, but I would get that information from them if they do give it and tell them that you're going to reach out to that organization directly. And then what what your, what your listeners can do is also focus on um, going to a website called charitynavigator.org. And that particular um, web page there, you can check the validity of that, of that charity for veterans. So I would just make sure that you don't provide any type of credit card information, Social Security information, anything along those lines. Make sure you verify before you provide any information to any of these scammers, especially, you know, your your personal funds or anything along those lines. And why do you think that the numbers have jumped so dramatically the last year? Because you mentioned earlier that the numbers are actually up sure. in 2021. Yeah, I do believe, uh, you know, with, with more people being home um, over the last two years, that could have been a, a correlation of that as well. And just the opportunity. The opportunity is there for people are at home. People will answer the phone. So these scammers have an opportunity to to uncover if someone is a veteran by just asking a couple of questions. Because as veterans, we're always looking for that second mission after we we have served our country. And any opportunity that we can help a fellow colleague, we're more apt to do that. And those scammers know that. But we are arming our um, our veteran community with the right resources to do that, and they can go to aarp.org slash veterans where we can provide and give them free resources to where they can go ahead and you know protect themselves against these, these scammers and so a lot of people especially in a, in a financial industry um recommend using yeah. online tools to try and um, secure your data uh, freezing your credit for example or using yeah. online bill pays as opposed to writing checks a lot of veterans, however, are old school. They want to still write the paper check. Is that a safety risk or, or a, uh, a security breach? You know, I, I you know, I, I would definitely say that, uh, I, you know, whatever makes, uh, you know, the, the veteran or their family most comfortable, but just be mindful that put in the security freeze on your account so that this will be, this is very impactful. This will help pre prevent 
any type of scammers. If they do capture your Social Security number, that will prevent them from setting up any type of new lines of credit or, or, or really causing further damage. So I highly recommend putting the security freeze on your account. It's very easy to do. Um, and if you do that, you will be able to protect yourself. And um, I think that would be important, as well as being um, set up on that do not call registry. Um, but the security freezes will do this. And I'll share, I'll share just, a, and t- just to highlight what you mentioned, um, that, you know, 81% of veterans and military um, have said in a, in, a, in a survey that we did that they did not have any type of security freezes on their credit reports. And they, and they could easily go to annualcreditreport.com for more information on how to get those credit freezes. I highly recommend it. And so a credit freeze basically allows you to freeze your credit uh, with all three bureaus. And then once if someone tries to use that, use your social security number, they have to run your social security number. So they're so it, would, it won't, it won't work. They won't. So whatever institution that tried to run your credit, will just get a block because they can't pull your credit. That is correct. I, I'll share a really quick story with you that I actually did that. I put the freeze on my account and went out to purchase a, a vehicle for my daughter. And while I was waiting at the dealership to get all everything taken care of, um, I, I received a phone call saying, Mr. Br- Mr. Broussard, someone is trying to set up or purchase a vehicle, you know, trying to use your credit. Is that you or is it someone else? I said, no, it's me. It's okay. And uh, it was fine. So it works. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I probably should have you know, um, told my daughter that, sorry, we can't do it because I put a block on my account and we can't get this car for you. But, uh, you know, that wouldn't have been a wise thing for a father to do. But, um, you know, not to just not to make light about it, but it, it, it's just to show the validity of it and how it really is there to protect you, as well as if you're going to do something online like we talked about, let's make sure we keep our firewall and antivirus software up to date. That's going to be important. Um, but, but, you know, we do want to share that, you know, AARP has this information that I shared as well as, you know, the AARP, you know, AARP.org slash veteran site. And that site gives you access to all of these free resources at no cost. So members are non members, okay? So. I remember you know, there was a. Oh, sorry, go ahead, go ahead, Keisha. Oh, you know, oh, sure, what I wanted to mention, like Troy was talking about, I remember, I think I was active duty at the time and I went to um, a doctor's appointment. And I got a call from my bank while I was right to go into the appointment. <laughs> and they said, oh, Miss Jackson, are, are you in Norway? And I said, no, I'm not. <laughs> and it's like, we saw, we just saw a, um, um, a deduction. It was like $2 or something from your account. Wow. So a lot of times what people will do is they'll, they'll run it. It could even be smaller than that just to see and verify that it's a good account to establish that connection, and then after that, they'll go in. So I made sure with my bank, you know, I have that fraud alert set up with my bank, so they'll call me, they'll report. I'll get emails that comes in to let me know, you know, on the different things that I have, um, uh, different accounts that I have set up. But I also wanted to to mention, when we talk about social media, a lot of times as caregivers, you could be part of a, a social media group, you know, support group. And, for instance, Facebook, um, it can, you can be targeted. You know, someone may send you a message if they're reading something that you wrote and say, hey, I want to connect with you. I'm really feeling sorry that you're going through this. And then that yeah. could be leading into getting additional information to set you up for that scam. So we have to be very vigilant and very careful in that role and it's something that we can't allow ourselves to become lax in because where you're thinking that someone is just really being genuine and, and pure, it could be, but it also could be someone that's trying to take advantage of you or your loved one. And I think you touched on something really important, Keish, because a lot of seniors are, are sometimes alone. So they don't yeah. have a family member or someone in the house to kind of watch them. And then sometimes if they're lonely, they might get that phone call or get these relationships that are established um, with someone yeah. who may have uh, nefarious means to try to take advantage of them. And there's just no eyeballs on the on the scene to really see what's really happening to protect them. And I think it's critical yeah, for so caregivers. True. Yeah, for caregivers to really, you know, to be, to be aware of this. We had an incident recently, recently where uh, someone had surrendered an annuity for, for, for someone and it was obvious that the signatures did not match 
the person who was right. actually uh, who actually set up the account. And what it looked like was the notary was actually the one that that uh, that uh, took the funds out of the account. Wow, you know, it's it's almost adding, you know, insult to injury. You know, where we have these these caregivers, all veteran caregivers all across the country, that that you know that that's really assisting veterans and and you know, giving back, and then to have something like this happen, you know. So when you're looking at you know, fraud in veterans that's very, you know, sad in their families, but uh, a caregiver to a veteran, or, 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 you know, to me, that is just, um, uh, we, that's why we have to create these free resources to protect them as well, because that's the last, last thing that we want to do is add any additional pressures to their situation. I think it's also critical, too, because nowadays, especially in the financial industry, there we have what's called trusted contacts now, so where you, where you yeah. name someone as in your, this, that you trust that, that someone that, you, that necessarily can't get information on your account per se or information on your personal um, pr uh, private private matters, but at least can be reached out to in case someone feels like you've been compromised. So if we can't get a hold of you or someone can't reach you, you have a trusted contact that can be reached and say, hey, maybe we should talk to your friend or talk to your person because we have some concerns. Just to have more eyeballs on the scene. Because this seems like I mean, this is becoming with the technology, we're getting a lot more fraud across across the board. Particularly, what, what I don't understand is when we get calls on our cell phones from out of state numbers, just random out of state numbers calling us on our cell phones, and they don't. And sometimes you pick up the phone, they don't even they don't even say anything. I don't. I do not understand what that game is about. Yeah, what that is about that is that I will share with you what we have seen is that those calls that come through they're being dialed by a computer because what you'll real what you'll understand is um, it's never a follow up call as you notice right mm -hmm. it's never a follow up for example if that call if it's a no one answers the phone and if they hang, you hang up uh, they're not going to call you right back because they're just being they're being dialed by a robo call and that's what I mentioned by having that do by getting your your phone set up and your cell phone set up on these do not call registries they help to lessen it or it allows you to easily recognize those normally if you have an unrecognizable phone that's calling your your cell phone especially i would probably you know not answer that phone call mm -hmm. that's something that i normally do i mean i know that it could be a family member calling from a different number but i nine times out of ten it's someone trying to either sell you something or defraud you, unfortunately. Hmm. And yeah, you know, okay. um, I wanted to add all that and be careful of, um, e uh, you know, emails that are coming into oh, you because yeah. uh, it may not be that person that you think it is, and it could be someone fishing or trying to get information. So you have to, again, you have to be very, you have, just have to be so vigilant. Um, diligent and making sure that you're protecting yourself because everybody are out there there are a lot of people with false apps you're thinking that you're downloading an app that's going to help you to connect your family with a doctor or a different type of resource or something like that and you find out once you um put your information in there now they got your credit card information so you know we say all of these things and it could be overwhelming it could be scary but you do have to think about these things and have to put yourself in a different mindset to be on the um, offense, you know, making sure that you're protecting yourself and always being on the defense. And it's not a bad idea to just to wait. If you see that email come through or that phone call come through, yeah. don't answer the phone. If it's, I don't answer any out-of-state calls. If I don't, understand, if I don't okay. recognize the number, if it's got a foreign area code, I do not answer that call. Let it go to right. voicemail, then 9 to 10, they don't leave a voicemail. The only thing I do get irritated by is that they'll leave a three-minute pause on my oh. answering service, so it's yeah. like three minutes oh of nothing, <laughs> and, they, and they usually call about six o'clock in the morning or three o'clock in the morning when you're when you're sleeping, you know. But right. take some time, you know, pause for a second, say, hey, does it make sense that my bank is sending me this email to click on this link to do this or that? Call the bank. Yeah, some, yeah sometimes when they do that, um, and with those calls, they want you to say your name. And you don't, they won't, may not tell you anything else, but once you say your name, now that's given authorization because now your name is said to do particular right. things. That's crazy. That's and, crazy. And I think, you know, and then, you know, uh, those numbers I shared about the reported numbers of how much um, these, the, these scams are costing, you know, or how much was stolen from the, the, mil the veteran and military families. You know, it was, it was somewhere around the numbers around 267 million. That was what was reported. You, you know, you know, I mean, Sean, mm. hey, Keisha, that's what was reported. 
you know, can you imagine how many people did not report because of some level of embarrassment? Mm -hmm. We want to take away that level of embarrassment and turn that into something empowering how you can help. And how you can help is whenever you reach, and what we're doing at AARP, when you reach out to, to us through our Fraud Watch Network, if you let us know what those frauds or those frauds are, we will make sure to share that with um, you know people across the country to make sure that those scams that someone else is not a predator, you know, is not being uh, a predator of these of these scammers. So uh, you know, you want to take if you are scammed, and you know, please make sure you go ahead and report that so that so that we could share that with others so it doesn't happen to anyone else, and uh, maybe shine more light on get in tougher laws on those who do these types of crimes. I mean, I think go. that's going to be important as well. So mm -hmm. I agree. Just and Keisha L. Jackson, that. U.S. Air Force veteran and family caregiver, brought us a great panelist, Mr. Troy Broussard. He's a senior yeah. advisor at AARP, Veterans and Military Family Initiatives. I appreciate both of you guys' time. Thanks, John. John, it was a pleasure to be here. Appreciate your time, and thank you, Keisha, for allowing me to be here Thanks, as well. Troy. Anytime. This is America's Heroes Group. We'll be right back.